Invading Russia's army has captured the town of Volodar, Ukraine's Donetsk region, after costly and failed assaults over the past two and a half years. The Institute for the Study of War reports. Thus, ISW referring to a well-known Russian mill blogger writes that the Russian decision to attack near Volodar in March 2022 was rash, as Russian forces would be stuck in the settlement. It is noted that in October to November 2022 and January to February 2023, Russia made at least two major offensive attempts to capture Volodar, both of which resulted in heavy losses of personnel and military equipment. According to analysts, Russia's previous defeats near Volodar led in part to the depletion of the 155th Marine Brigade. Some Russian sources expressed doubts that Russian troops would be able to move forward quickly and achieve operationally significant breakthroughs immediately after capturing Volodar. Russia's seizure of Volodar is unlikely to fundamentally alter the course of offensive operations in western Donetsk Oblast, largely because Volodar is not a particularly crucial logistics node and because Russian forces have controlled most of the main roads running into Volodar prior to October the 1st, meaning that Russian forces have already had the ability to interdict Ukrainian logistics in this part of the front to some extent, analysts added. On October the 1st, the OSINT portal Deep State said that Russians managed to capture the city of Volodar in the Donetsk region. Suspiln's sources in the brigade defending the city deny the full occupation. Volodar is also the last fortified town before the village of Velika Novosilka and the entire southern part of Donetsk Oblast that Ukraine controls. Russian troops are trying to seize new positions in the Zaporizhia sector to improve their tactical position. Ukrainian military's southern command spokesperson Vladislav Voloshin told Radio Free Europe. Voloshin said there were indications that Russian forces were gathering troops near the towns of Priyutny and Robotine in order to attack Ukrainian positions. There are certain signs that the enemy is taking such steps, concentrating personnel and moving them to the front line, training these assault groups, accumulating ammunition, he said. Following Kyiv's ongoing incursion into Kursk Oblast, Russia reportedly began moving its troops from Ukraine south and east to the Russian region, but Voloshin said the number of troops in the Zaporizhia sector remained around the same. Russia has also redeployed certain units and specialists to the Kursk direction and is increasing the number of personnel by 2,000 to 3,000 soldiers per week to replenish losses, Voloshin said. According to Voloshin, Russia does not have enough troops to launch a large-scale offensive. No such groups have been spotted so far. Therefore, we can only say that the enemy is preparing for smaller assaults, Voloshin said. Russian military man Yegor Buzenko, call sign 13th, said that the Russian army is facing a shell shortage. According to him, after Ukraine destroyed Russian ammunition depots in Toropets and Tikhoretsk, the Russian army introduced daily limits on shells. Ukrainian journalist and blogger Denis Kazansky published a video of his statement on his Telegram channel. Guzenko admitted that the shortage of shells is felt not locally but also in different parts of the front. At the same time, it is impossible to conduct competent and prepared assault operations with such a quantity of shells. According to the occupier, he does not see the work of Russian weapons factories citing the destruction of large ammunition arsenals of the Russian army. Ukrainian strikes on ammunition depots in Russia may affect the battlefield as early as October, says Estonian intelligence. This was stated on Friday by Lieutenant Colonel Yannick Kesselman, Deputy Commander of the Estonian Defense Forces Intelligence Center, as reported by ERR. Kesselman noted that the recent decrease in the intensity of attacks by Russian forces. Last week, an average of 226 strikes per day were recorded, while this week, the number dropped to 155, he pointed out. The Estonian intelligence representative stated that this decline is not yet a consequence of Ukraine's attacks deep into Russian territory last week, particularly the destruction of ammunition depots, referring to the strike on the missile storage in Toropets, Tver region. The results of this attack will likely be visible in two to three weeks, Kesselman believes.
Since the Russian Federation has lost a significant number of munitions intended for the front line, it will likely have to prioritize its operations in the coming months, he said. Kesselman added that, given this situation, it remains unclear whether the Russian army has the resources to push back Ukrainian units in the Kursk region. On the night of September the 18th, drones from the SSU, it remains unclear whether the Russian army has the resources to push back Ukrainian units in the Kursk region. On the night of September the 18th, drones from the SSU, Main Intelligence Directorate and Special Operations Forces destroyed a large storage facility of the Main Rocket and Artillery Directorate of the Russian Ministry of Defense in the settlement of Toropets, Tver region. The depot stored missiles intended for operational tactical missile systems Iskander, tactical missile systems Tochka-U, guided aerial bombs, and artillery ammunition.